Today we're going to tell you about some unspoken camping rules. Common sense that's not so common. Don't make me send rip. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about some unspoken rules, camping etiquette. My number one rule basically covers all of it. Just be respectful. Be mindful of your fellow campers and the people around you. Yesterday we came in to Crooked River and had a, a little bit of an incident, nothing major. You want to elaborate or, or no? Well, that's basically uh, today's society. Nobody cares about anybody else and doesn't respect anybody else, and it's all about them. So they basically backed in a spot next to us. They were blasting loud rap music most of the day. Kids were up on the top of the motorhome, jumping around. And we understand, you know, it's... Kids it's want to have fun. A vacation, I get it. and they yeah. want to have fun, but but playing on the top of a Class C uh, Army, motorhome yeah. site next to us, screaming and hollering, and uh, pretty much most of the day, all we heard was f bombs being dropped by the husband and a wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever they and are. And believe me, I have a, a trucker's mouth, so um, for me to complain, it had to be a little bit extreme. Yeah, um, so. it also, what I was more referring to was the fact that we had come in early. Sometimes there are circumstances that um, are unavoidable, and we had come into the campground knowing that we were going to have to wait to get into our spot. And the person that was on our spot was delayed in getting to his spot because he was moving because that camper was late getting out of their spot. So. That leads me to rule number one. Let's oh. honor the check-in time and the check-out time. I think it's very important if you stay um, on that schedule. I, I get sometimes, you know, slides break and, you know, you have mechanical issues. But basically, you know, if you're supposed to check out by 11 o'clock, be out by 11 o'clock. Even 10.55, in Randy's world, we would be out, what, at least by 10.45, yeah, at least. Up, like yeah, so definitely. And coming in early is another thing, too. You know, the campgrounds do their best to um, accommodate you, but sometimes they're unable to. So we, we played a weight game yesterday. Yeah. Uh, no, no big deal. It worked out well. Um, we ended up getting actually a full hookup because of the delay. Not because they felt bad for us, just someone happened to cancel because it's a full campground again. So that worked out great. So our next rule would be if, you, if you're if you going into a campground that affords you the opportunity to pick your spots, like your BLM camping, your boondocking, you don't want to park right next to the other camper. Be courteous and pick a spot a little bit away from them. I know a lot of people want to do the whole friends and let's have dinner and you know cocktails and all that good stuff and it's great you can do that you just don't need to be right on top of your yeah, well those are your different fellow. They, they know each other it's the strangers that you'd be out uh, you know boondocking somewhere and there's thousands of acres and they want to pull right up next to you and park right next to you like they, it's almost like a lot of people are scared of the dark or, yeah. or they're well, scared to be true. alone or whatever I mean respect the you know respect it, it if you really want to park that close to somebody, then go over and ask them. Say, hey, do you mind if I, you know, come over and, you know, park over here or whatever and, right. and do that. It's just right. pull it in and, and drop in, uh, drop in jacks. And it's a, it's a pack mentality, I guess. Everybody. It's got to be. I'm not real sure. So. And we've um, noticed ever since COVID, and I don't know if it's because the new influx of uh, people coming into this, this RV world. There's just no, no, uh, there's no courtesy at all toward other people. And, and people are it's just It's a very entitled mentality, unfortunately. It's crazy. So. Like, never used to be that way, but, you know, I mean, yesterday was funny. We were talking about what we were going to do for a video this week, and we decided on this video, and then uh, these 
these uh well we had another video we were gonna do these people pulled in next to us and they're first they're fighting getting in their spot which a lot of people do everybody <laughs> does but yeah i mean it's a, we've had a few choice words it's a giant spot and they're having trouble backing in and they're yelling and carrying on and i'm like oh boy it's gonna be a good one here and i could say probably over two years we've only had a couple incidents that one in the dark. Yeah, where we didn't like oh, our that neighbors. Goodness. And, oh, no, I thought you meant when we carried on parking in the dark well, in yeah, Florida well, in that one park we'd never been to. This was all day. The, guy, the kids were on the roof. He was screaming at them and cursing I'm at I'm going to throw a pro tip in there. It's not on our rules, but don't park in the dark. You want to get where yeah, you're you going in the daytime. Up. So, yeah. and parking, that leads me to the next rule. When, when you arrive at your site, don't park in someone else's site even if the site seems to be empty now don't get me wrong when we first get in i usually will park a, you know or you're talking about the toad or whatever yeah right, right. Uh, the, exactly your your toad vehicle not your camper your rv or fifth uh, wheel so you want to pause it one minute 37 seconds later Okay, so we're back from our um, lawnmower cutting break. Yeah, you know. Landscaping you, day here at the park. Whenever you try to do a video, <laughs> either a plane flies over or a lawnmower comes rolling by. So, but. now what were we saying? Not to park in someone else's spot when you unload the toad or unhook the toad and you're hooking up. Just be mindful. Um, and even if like the spot is open as you're camping through the week and there's a spot open, you should not park in that spot because you never know when a camper's coming in. Yeah, we right? seen that at our last stop. The guy was parking his dually in the RV Washing spot. Washing his next. car and stuff and like that. And we've had that once or twice where we had to go to management and say, hey, uh, we we <laughs> reserved this spot and there's a truck parked in it. Like, Yeah, Ocean so, Breeze, we had to do yeah, that. Mm -hmm. We did, so all right. And keep in mind, don't speed when you're going through the park. There's a lot of kids, dogs, wildlife typically. Yeah, you never know what might be running around, so be mindful of the speed limit. That's not a major rule or anything, but just be respectful and courteous. Uh, um, the next one's a big one. Don't walk through someone else's campsite. It drives me crazy. Yes. That's my site. I rented it. I paid for it. Stay out of it. Unless I invite you in, I don't want you in there. <laughs> okay? It's like, that's <laughs> it. Randy's not a big people person. No. If you haven't figured that yeah, out no, yet. You can, be, <laughs> you can come on over and say hi and all, but we've had peep, kids especially cutting through our site because they yeah, don't want to But the kids I don't think are educated. The parents don't well, the inform parents, the kids that they shouldn't yeah, be cutting the parents, through the site. Yeah, yes. The parents, the and that problem. goes back to what I said in the very beginning. Yes. Be respectful and mindful of your fellow campers. That's I don't care all. if you got to walk around to get to the path. You don't cut through someone's site. That's it. End of discussion on that one. Yeah. Our next rule is... Um, Especially at night. We had one... Where were we? I forget. <laughs> Especially at night. I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. We had about. one cutting through at nighttime. Like, you're creeping around my RV at night. I don't know. Like, yeah, we probably... Being ex -law uh, yeah, being ex-law enforcement. Yeah, I'm ex-law enforcement. It's retired probably not law a good idea so to be creeping you, at you're night. You're creeping around my, my, my RV at night. I don't I don't know who you are. You could be a bad guy that I put in jail, or you could be anybody. So, that's it, not a good idea. So, All use right. common sense. Rolling into the nighttime. Be courteous with your night lights. Yes. Um, your end cap, your awnings, your porch light, your string lights. When you go to bed, you should probably shut Turn them, them down. Off. I mean, um, again, it goes back to what I said earlier. People are afraid of the dark. Yeah, well, Most, maybe. A lot of people like to come out, and especially state parks, so they can see the stars at night and have it be, you know, peaceful. The, well, the new it RVs, may keep people up, too, from sleeping. Like, yeah. not everybody has the dark out shades like we have. And so. the, the new RVs have these bright LEDs, especially the fifth wheels with the stupid LEDs on the front that do nothing but light up the whole area, um, turn them off at night. You don't need them. Nobody's going to get you. No. It'll be okay. That's okay. You can turn them on if you're going to go yeah. outside. But we walked by one, uh, <laughs> this was a Class A motorhome, and they had every LED light on all night long. You come around the corner walking your dog at night or whatever, and it's like, ugh. Rolling into the dogs. Let's do some pet etiquette. Yes. Um, you want to keep your dogs leashed 
on a six foot that's length. That's a big thing. That's like, a big we thing. We see this all the time. I'm walking my little pugs and here comes your big old dog running off We lead. have no issues against big dogs. We've had I golden retrievers and whatnot. If um, they're gonna hurt my dog, we're gonna have an issue. Well, oh. it's not so much that. It's, it, a dog may perceive it as a threat, threat. if another dog comes Especially running up, even lead. if they're friendly. When, it, when a dog's on lead, they have no defense. They can't run away. Exactly. So they're pretty much trapped. So, and that, that's another like pro tip. If your dog gets in a dog fight and you have it on a leash, let it go. Let the leash go. Let the dogs you know, be able to run and get away and do their defense and whatever they need to do while you try to separate them. Don't hang on to them because you're just going to get your dog hurt more. All right? Um, if you have a pen, you can keep them in a pen if the park allows it. And we've also, some areas we've used our zip line. Um, but don't zip line your dog out Don't get night. carried away. We were at this park a couple weeks ago and this guy was driving in uh, six foot metal stakes into the ground. <laughs> and uh, putting yeah. up a, a fence, temporary construction dogs. fence. And I'm like, dude, you're going to ruin it for everybody. Like, well, and the dogs, I don't think, would have stayed in that, that fence either. In so. the south specifically, the sewer lines and the water lines aren't very deep. So you might just drive your little stake right through someone's, uh, right through the park sewer line and ruin a lot of people's day. So A lot of people's day, especially the maintenance crew. Yep. So. Um, and always, always take your own dog bags and pick, pick up, up the up poop. Dog. I don't know how many campsites we've rolled up to are dog parks. Just because it's a dog park doesn't mean, doesn't you, mean leave you leave it. They don't have people that clean up after your dogs. You are supposed to clean up after your dogs. It's not that hard. If you have a dog, I would imagine you expect it to pick up dog poop at it's one point in your a, life. So just, please do it. It's it just a common courtesy to yeah, your fellow campers if you can't exactly. do it you don't want to pick up dog poop don't get a dog i agree you know, i i don't nasty. like when randy's mean and nasty but i have to agree with this one it's, it's, nasty. it's a health hazard to other dogs we've been in dog parks where you couldn't even walk in the dog park because it smells so, so bad like i wouldn't even take my and dogs it, in it goes there. back to the broken window theory the, the old law enforcement thing <laughs> Once one pile of poop's there, then everybody thinks it's okay to leave another pile of poop there. And the next thing you know, it gets crazy. And we've seen this no, in, I've literally had we've to seen clean this up. in three thousand dollar a month resorts. Yes. Where they, and they're probably the worst offenders. I guess they're too good to pick up the poop. Well, we don't want to assume anything, but, but yes, that it's, could uh, be. That we've seen them everywhere. You know, every from state parks to boondock. Boondock, that's a little different. You're out in the wilderness. Well, you still want to pick up well, in the immediate do. camping area. Yeah. And if the dog poops on the trail, you certainly want to pick it up. Nobody yep. wants dog poop. On. I have literally thrown a pair of sneakers away because it was so bad. I didn't see it. And Randy's usually very kind to me and cleans my dog poop off of my shoes. No. But this one wasn't salvageable. Oh, you walk around like this. <laughs> I am in a daze, around. just taking it all in. What can I say? So poop then leads us, segues into my next tip. What's the next one? Be courteous when emptying your black tank. A lot of the um, parks, private parks, not so much state parks and your national parks, you're right on top of your your camper, yeah, right? Your neighbor. Right next to your neighbor. So if so. they're sitting out at their, their picnic table and that's right next to your sewer hookups, don't go out there and empty your black tank. It's going to stink. It does It, stink, it doesn't no matter, matter that it's all enclosed. It still stinks. I usually wait. I'll look and see if yeah. they're, they're not outside or something. People always come and go. And, and typically there's not an immediate brush to I know. empty your black it might, tank. It might be um, a little bit of an inconvenience, but just wait till your neighbor's gone before you dump and nobody wants to right. see that. They we know that at... you're entitled to dump your yeah. black tank whenever you want, but Again, just be courteous. Just That's all we're saying. Nice human just, being. just be courteous <laughs> of your fellow campers. I can't right. say it enough. Um, and then we have two little minor ones. You want to respect your quiet. Oh, oh no, no, I almost skipped it. What? Don't put the sewer hose on yeah, the picnic more, table. I can't tell you how many times we've been watching people pack up and they take their sewer hose and they lay it across this picnic table. It's the most disgusting thing. Like, come on, people. It's okay, I guess, if you're going to be putting a, a cover down. Well, everybody right? has to put a cover. We put right. a cover down we because, a cover down because, because of, of morons what like we've this. Seen. Yeah, it's Correct. like disgusting. It's like, 
if we're going to eat outside, you're it definitely gets covered. You're too lazy to bend over. You're too lazy to, to do it right. So no, I just don't think people think. It's no, not so much a laziness. I it's just laziness. don't think it's a, a, the courtesy. 90% 90, 90 of the courtesy problems and etiquette is because of laziness. And we suggest, um, what's the word I want? Honoring the quiet time, being mindful of the quiet hours. Yeah. You know, we live full time in our coach, and that's why I guess we're more mindful to it than others. Some people don't get up at the crack of dawn. Some people don't go to bed at 10 a.m. It's just, it's uh, just or 10 p.m. Excuse me. It's, it's just common courtesy. If they have quiet hours from 10 to 7, turn your radio down. Don't be yelling and screaming, you know. If your dog is barking, bring the dog in. That's another thing these people next to us did yes. last night. And this is a pet peeve of mine. Well, I already said, don't leave them tied out. Yeah, they mm -hmm. left them tied out all night. It's, most, it's, it's, most parks don't allow it, so please don't do the it. The dog was barking. It didn't bother us because we're kind of in, insulated real good. But Yeah, our four season It's coach, just the so. whole thought of... You know, again, if you don't want to be a responsible dog owner, don't be. It, don't have a dog. If you're not, you're not that bright, and you can't take care of an animal, that, then don't get one. It's simple. My last pro tip is don't offer to help somebody when they're backing in. I know, but this is a lot of people think they're being kind yep. and courteous by offering to help, but we have a system. Yeah, our system isn't great, and that's but a pro it's tip. A system. That's a pro tip. That's don't a pro let tip. anybody help you except for the person that is with you, that knows you, knows how you like the back end, knows what hand signals you're going to use, all that kind of stuff. I've even gone to camp. We've gone to campgrounds where KOAs the, typically. The, yeah, KOAs. They want to guide you in, and they no, go away. I got this. Well, they still guide you in, but, yeah, but you still just, you just I don't, ignore them. I ignore them. <laughs> I let them play. I let them do their. You know, yeah. let them do their thing and let them feel good, but I'm not watching them. I'm watching my wife or my mirror. Or yelling at his wife. Because <laughs> I guess what? You back into something while they're guiding you, they're going to walk away anyway. It's not like they're going to be responsible for it. I just don't like it when people come walking up, just random people. And you some know? people mean well. They, they do. do. They do I, mean well. But it's, uh, I, I, if we say, thank you, we've got it. Yeah. Don't go, are yeah, you don't, sure? Don't I don't know, you're a little close over here. Yeah. Now you go, okay, thank you. Have a great day. We'll catch up later. Yeah, you so. know, so keep that in mind. If you see somebody struggling, you may want to pop over real quick and That's offer different. your service. That's different. You can Being offer. courteous. I've seen people do that. I've even no tried to do you. that with the elderly right. that uh, can't back up. So you offer to back it in for them after, you know, 17 tries. <laughs> but... It's, uh, again, you don't want to intrude on someone's uh, space, but at the same time, you don't want them to have an accident. They're obviously having trouble, and we see that a lot. Okay, well, we hope you loved our, our tips and suggestions, our camping rules, quote unquote, and etiquette. etiquette. Um, just be courteous of your neighbors. That's all we're asking. Yeah, you know, society is a, is a mess right now, so. Uh, you could try it in your everyday life, even if you're not a full-time RV, or just right. try to be, you know, friendly to your neighbors. Send out that peace, light, and love. We're all we got. Without your neighbors, you have nothing. So uh, that's it, all I right. guess. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. You know what to do. Click subscribe. Hit the bell. Yeah, give us a thumbs, thumbs up. up. And we'll see you in our next video.